Qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix is over and Lewis Hamilton has officially taken his first pole position since Saudi Arabia in 2021, but behind him is main rival Max Verstappen in what was one of the most exciting qualifying sessions of the year as the field has closed up even further and today I'm going to be doing a data analysis from a crazy qualifying session. Now let's get to the video. As usual I'll be talking about Ferrari, Aston Martin, Mercedes and Red Bull later on so stick around for that. Qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix saw F1 introduced a modified qualifying format where Q1 had to be done on hard tyres, Q2 on medium tyres and finally Q3 was on the soft compound tyres. This meant that for the first time teams had to make sure that they were comfortable on all three tyre compounds to make sure they could progress through each qualifying stage. Also at Budapest there was an incredible amount of track evolution which is something that we typically do see at this circuit but just how much did the lap times drop from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3? Well to show this I have all the lap times of Oscar Piastri in the McLaren. His first representative time at the beginning of Q1 was a 119.223 on the hard compound of tyres but his lap at the end of Q3 was a 116.905 meaning that there was a 2.3 second improvement in pace. Approximately 1.2 to 1.5 seconds would be from tyre performance but the other 0.7 to 1.1 seconds would come from pure circuit evolution. Let's now take a look at his Q3 lap time and compare it to his fastest lap in Q1 to see where the advantages were. As you can see, Piastri is faster just about everywhere when changing from hard tyres to soft tyres, which is kind of what you would expect. As you can see, he can carry more speed into the slower corners, he can also get to full throttle sooner because he has so much more grip, and this means that he does end up with a higher top speed, and this is why on the track dominance, it is almost all orange instead of white. White represents his time on hard tyres and orange represents his time on the soft tyres. This shows quite nicely why the drivers prefer more grippy softer tyres for one fast lap in qualifying. So with that in mind, what teams look good and what teams did not look so good in qualifying today? Well one team that did not look so good in qualifying sadly for them was the Williams team as both Alex Albon and Logan Sargent were eliminated in the first part of qualifying being the only team to have both drivers out in Q1. Qualifying was always going to be difficult for Williams as they have so much less downforce than the cars around them and their advantage of being a good car in straight line speeds is negated when the circuit doesn't really have any straight line speeds and is all corners and this lack of downforce probably led to them struggling to also generate temperature and grip on the harder tyres. Let's compare the lap time of Albon and Hulkenberg from Q1. Please note this Hulkenberg lap is on hard tyres as well. Let's see where the Williams are losing out. As you can see because they are massively lacking downforce they struggle for grip on the hard tyres and therefore cannot generate good traction on the exits of corners meaning that Hulkenberg is actually faster in a straight line despite the fact that Williams is one of the slipperiest cars out there in a straight line. Also, Albon has to back off much sooner and go so much slower to get around the corners, which is the exact opposite of what we saw at Silverstone. Sadly for Williams, this is always going to be a very tricky race for them, but thankfully for them, the next race at Spa should go much better and we could see them back in the points at the Belgian Grand Prix. Just very briefly, I want to say Daniel Ricciardo had a brilliant first qualifying session back in F1 as he qualified the Alpha Tauri in incredible P13 and is ahead of teammate Yuki Tsunoda, which is exactly what the Red Bull team in a way wanted to see. Between their fastest laps in Q1, it was incredibly close and it seems like Tsunoda lost it going into the final two hairpins as he couldn't carry as much speed as Daniel Ricciardo managed, which could have been more down to Ricciardo absolutely sending it into those final couple of corners to try and make something work for him, and well, it did work for him. Tomorrow though will be the true test for himself in the Alpha Tauri, but it was certainly a great start for Ricardo. The question is, is can he actually score points on his first race? One team that had an incredible day and I think shocked absolutely everyone was the Alfa Romeo team as both Joe Guan Yu and Valtteri Bottas put in incredible performances and they line up 5th and 7th on the grid. At first I thought it may have been because they were strong on hard tyres but they had great pace on all three compounds. 
Let's compare Alonso and Joe's fastest laps. As you can see, there is less than one tenth between the two drivers, but yet Joe Guan Yu is P5 on the grid and Alonso is P8, showing just how close the field is. And between them in this lap, it is incredibly close, and there is actually very little to tell between them. The sections I noticed where Joe was a little bit faster was here and here. He manages to carry more speed through these sections, but by the end of the lap, I think his soft tyres were starting to overheat a little bit more than Fernando's, as he has to go slower through the final corner. In the race tomorrow, with very high temps expected, I'm not sure Alfa Romeo will be able to keep up this pace, but there is a great chance that they can at least score a couple of all-important championship points. McLaren also had another brilliant qualifying session and line up third and fourth on the grid as the Papaya revival continues and this result now means that in my opinion, McLaren are officially in the fight with the top teams. Lando once again just missed out on pole position. So let's look at both Lewis Hamilton's lap and Lando Norris's lap. As you can see through the turn 4, turn 5 section of the lap, Lando carries way more speed than Lewis and right now things are looking very good for him. McLaren has brilliant downforce as well and as such I wonder if they were starting to overheat the soft tyres a little because towards the end of the lap after those fast flowing sections you can see after then that's when he starts to lose the time to Lewis and that could be because they've overheated the soft tyres. Tomorrow's race could see them back on the podium again, and with Lewis and Max starting next to each other, who knows what could happen for them. They may even be able to sneak a win if Lewis and Max recreate some 2021 races. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 3k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button for more content. Now, let's get back to the video and let's take a look at the top four teams and let's start with Ferrari. For Ferrari, today was a difficult day at the office as Carlos Sainz went out in Q2 and Charles was beaten by an Alfa Romeo, but of course it was incredibly close. When you take a look at the times of Leclerc and compare it to the pole lap of Hamilton, what can you see? Well, firstly, Ferrari has an incredible launch into Turn 1, probably due to him getting a great exit from the final corner at the beginning of his lap without much compromise. However, sadly for Charles, this is where the advantage ends. Throughout the rest of the lap, Lewis is able to carry more speed through many of the corners, and this is where Leclerc is losing time. He did not look planted on track when watching his lap, which tells me that the tyres are either overheating or in general they are lacking downforce. I have a feeling it is the former, and I do fear that Ferrari may have a difficult race due to tyre wear likely being very high with temperatures that are expected for the race. For Carlos Sainz, not making it out of Q2 is not going to be great for him. Yes, it does mean that he has two sets of soft tyres for the race, but due to the high temperatures, I have a feeling that the softest tyres in the Pirelli range will not be featuring much during the Grand Prix. For Mercedes, qualifying was a tale of two halves as Lewis incredibly took pole position, but his teammate George Russell didn't even make it out of Q1. But why was that? Well, let's take a look at Russell and Hamilton's lap from Q1 to see where it went wrong. For George, he was heavily compromised at the beginning of his lap, which is why his top speed is a lot less than Hamilton's. But this was Russell's fault for going too slow and allowing rivals to pass him. Through the chicane section as well, Lewis is much faster than George. Russell finally begins to close the gap towards the end of the lap, however unfortunately for him, the damage is already done and he is out in Q1. For Russell, he should have a stronger race though, as he does have plenty sets of fresh medium tyres at his disposal, and I do anticipate it will be a multi-stop race and those fresh mediums might just save his Grand Prix. For Lewis, it was an incredible day which saw him take pole position. The race for him will be an interesting race at the start as he lines up against his arch-rival Max Verstappen. If he can get off the line well, then he might be able to hold off Verstappen for a little while in the Grand Prix. But there is always that question of what could happen when they get together. I will be comparing the laps of Verstappen and Hamilton 
very shortly, so stick around for that. For Aston Martin, it was another difficult day at a circuit that should have really suited them perfectly. The Hungaro ring was a circuit that should suit them perfectly, but yet Stroll is out in Q2, and Alonso finds himself down in P8 on the grid. It feels like Aston Martin at this point have been outdeveloped by their rivals. Tomorrow's race though could be saved if tyre wear is high, and I do think because it will be, they could have a good race, but I don't think it will be possible for them to score a podium as I originally thought might happen. Finally for Red Bull, they've finally been beaten on pure pace for the first time since Baku very early on in the season as Max Verstappen was pipped to pole by rival Lewis Hamilton. His teammate Sergio Perez actually had a good day as he finally made it through to Q3, but he does line up P9 on the grid. But hey, at least he made it through to Q3. But the question on everyone's mind is where did Verstappen lose out on pole position versus Lewis Hamilton? Well, let's compare the laps of Hamilton to Verstappen to see what we can see. It is very close between the two. Max started the lap faster as we come to expect. However, on the exit of turn one, he loses a little bit of time due to Hamilton getting a slightly better exit. The main area where Lewis gains his advantage though is through the chicanes at the top end of the circuit as he is able to carry more speed and this is where he secures pole position. It is all through the technical corners. Max also has a twitch towards the end of his lap which pretty much seals pole position for Lewis Hamilton. Tomorrow, the race between Hamilton and Verstappen will be very exciting as Mercedes are typically good on their tyres, which is very similar to Red Bull, and this could be the hardest fight of the year for Verstappen if Red Bull want to break the record that McLaren currently hold for most consecutive victories in F1. The question is though, will Red Bull be able to break that record for most consecutive victories, or will Mercedes or maybe even McLaren stop them from achieving that? Let me know your thoughts down below and as always comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.